This is Friday 11 11 11 and we're at VFW post 9657 in Roseman and we're getting ready to start here at 11 o'clock a tribute to veterans and this is the color guard for our ceremony this morning and I'm going to ask these individuals their names starting here from the left. I am Cadet Tech Sergeant Sousa Brandon. Cadet Airman Wagner Autumn. Cadet Airman Basic Grump. And are you involved in the program at the high school? Yes. yes sir. Uh huh. And how long have you guys been doing this? I've been here for doing it for two years. Okay. This is my first year. First year. First year. Good morning, sir, and uh, thanks for coming to Roseman to uh, give tribute to our veterans. Thank you. Uh, what an honor to be able to uh, to recognize uh, our veterans and uh, right here locally. Uh, uh huh. Absolutely uh, amazing the opportunity to uh, not only a, a day of honor but a day to honor uh -huh. these particular veterans. Thank you for Sergeant Pedro for Lance Corporal Lopez mentioned already as men who represent so many other thousands of men and women who have given their lives for our nation. The, Raise uh, hands. The, 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 the. Order. Harm. Indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Order. Harm. Today we are honored and salute all many American veterans who throughout our history has unselfishly placed their lives on the line for freedom. On every Veterans Day we remember our doughboys who in World War I died on the battleground in Europe, originally called Armistice Day. This day was conceived as a tribute to the Americans who sacrificed their lives in that war. The veterans remaining from this period should be proud of their service. Yet today we honor all American veterans who have served in every other war before and after World War I to defend democracy. They are your neighbors next door, the owners of the grocery store, the firemen saving lives. They are 26 million Americans living today who have proudly worn the colors of a military uniform. They are more than one million who have died defending the United States. Some of these veterans are famous heroes who have received great deals of honor and publicity. Most are not. Most are just ordinary citizens who answered the call to duty when he came to our grateful country and we appreciate your sacrifice. We gather here to recognize not only Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marines and Coast Guard veterans who have sacrificed both in war and in peace to protect America and our American way of life. We're here to honor those brave men and women who proudly served this great nation, for they are the fabric from which our flag has been woven. Today is a day of honor and also a day to honor. On this day of celebration and reflection, I thank each of you who has worn a United States military uniform for your honorable service and sacrifice for our freedom. Thank you. ceremony and uh, we had the marine color guard from uh, marine air group 41 detachment a from uh, edwards air force base sure and i have their names that i could email to that'd be great and then our speaker was lieutenant colonel 
um, Raymond J. Schreiner, mm -hmm. United States Marine Corps, and he flies H-1s, and that's Cobras. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're the four-bladed Cobras sure. uh, out at uh, China Lake. Uh -huh. And uh, he gave a, a great talk, uh, reminded us of uh, that Veterans Day started out as Armistice Day, mm -hmm. and uh, told kind of the history of that and then told a little bit about the history of um, the 100th anniversary of naval aviation. Well, I gotta say that uh, as an active duty uh, service person and uh, pilot, naval aviator, uh, it, it has a lot of meaning for, for me and for, for all the Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard aviators out there. Uh, so we've come a long way in this 100 years, mm -hmm. you know, from a, from a historic flight on the USS Pennsylvania uh, where uh, Eugene Ely uh, flew with a motorcycle helmet and inner tubes around his his chest for flotation just in case he needed them. And, and nowadays you see aircraft that transform like something out of a science fiction movie. Uh, it can go from hovering to supersonic flight in, in, uh, in the, with the same vehicle in the same flight. Mm -hmm. uh, that take off and, and land vertically uh, mm -hmm. to our amphibious ships and support our humanitarian uh, missions ashore as well as our combat missions. Mm -hmm. So that's what it means to me is it's just great to be a part of that history. The first towers of the first commercial wind turbines at the Manzana facility on 172nd Street in Roseman are going up today, November 11th, 2011. And two towers are in the air already. So those two numbers first gives those two cards, and then you do the next until you're done, then you see who has the most cards. Oh, yes. All right, so you both take your cards, okay, and you shuffle them, yeah. Now, turn over the first one at the same time. This is a race, okay? Eight times five. Eight times five. Forty. Yes. Okay, you get those. Now, do the next, okay? Turn the card. Eighteen. Continue. I'm excited about Project READ because this is an opportunity for the community to see what we are learning in our fourth grade class. Also, my students are able to see that the information that they are learning they will be able to use as an adult. This year, um, the Roseman News was one of our, um, our good sponsors, and this is our, our U8 team, uh, U8-2, and so I'd like to present this to Mr. Joyce and thank you very much. Thank you. They work really hard, they have done a great job, so enjoy. You can't see it, you like it. You gotta feel it, you like it. Woo, it's shocking. Mike, I'm gonna walk around and talk to you for that and to stand behind a podium and hide. Um, as I said, my name is Staff Sergeant Miller. I'm the local Toys for Tots coordinator for the Antelope Valley this year. One of the things that makes Toys for Tots kind of unique as a charity is we're national, but we're also local centric, so to speak which means that everything that we do in our toy drives right here in Antelope Valley goes to the Antelope Valley. So when we raise money, when we collect toys, that stays right here. So it doesn't go across the country to Atlanta or New York, and it's not going to Texas or North Dakota to have just a $5 or $10 toy to make the biggest difference in their lives. It's just, it's the ultimate reward. And I couldn't pull, you know, I could put an entire paycheck 
into a donation bin, and I would not feel a fraction of the satisfaction that I get by handing out coins. <laughs>